But right now, let's get to our first artist. Kelly Church is a black ash basket weaver who was recently recognized by the National Heritage Fellowship Award. Take a look. My name is Kelly Church. I'm from Hopkins, Michigan, and I'm an NEA National Heritage Fellow. For Native people, uh, black ash baskets have always been um, an important way to honor someone. So they give them away um, as gifts. When somebody has a baby or want to have a baby basket, um, when someone passes away, occasionally I'll be asked to make strawberry baskets. And um, when people get married, they'll ask for wedding baskets. So baskets have just been an important part of our life. Black ash basket weaving is uh, its a tradition that brings us all together. It teaches us patience. It teaches us to work together um, as a family, as communities. It's been um, a tradition among our Anishinaabe people for thousands of years. I'm Adawan Potawatomi, so my grandmother was part of the Grand Traverse Band, and my grandfather um, was from the Grand River, Ottawa, and the Matchipanashawish Band um, here in town. And my family is enrolled in the Matchipanashawish Band. Black ash baskets are made by going into the woods and harvesting that tree. First we lay down some tobacco and we offer thanks to all of our ancestors that passed on these teachings. We cut it down into logs about six to eight feet long and then we put them over our shoulders and we walk out of the woods. We debark it two inches in width from end to end on the log with a draw shave. We scrape it off and then we pound it with the back side of a really old axe and it makes this beautiful, beautiful resounding noise that is just, um, it's an amazing noise and we just love to hear that. And so when we pound on it, it separates the fibers in between the growth rings, the growth rings pop up. We take each growth ring, split them apart, and then I shave them uh, with the back side of a knife and then we're finally ready to weave our beautiful baskets. So preparation is 75% of what we do and the weaving is about 25%. I like to do my basket weaving in my living room, at my home, I open the windows, I listen to the birds. If it's, you know, not too bad of a day outside when my husband's pounding, then we can, you know, do some work outside. And also, um, there's a community hall named Monterey Hall that we've been meeting at for 15 years as families. Those are the places that I like to weave, and um, I can weave anywhere. I can weave in my car even, so I just love to weave. When I watch my mother weave, I see a totally different side of her, actually. <laughs> She's very calm and collected and driven. Um, just She's excited to see how it will turn out, and she's excited to show. She's got like a five-year-old's excitement, and she's like, oh, look how this turned out. <laughs> I don't know, it's my mom at her purest form. I really enjoy seeing that. Um, I'm really well known for um, weaving strawberry blossom baskets, top hats. Um, I do these uh, little eggs called Fibergé eggs, you know, based on the Fabergé egg. Everybody loves something beautiful and shiny. And so I weave Fibergé eggs and I incorporate metal into them. And the metal is to show that we're losing our material and we're going to have to find other materials to continue our weaving traditions. Black ash basket weaving is becoming a lost art due to the emerald ash borer. It has slowly decimated um, almost all of the trees in the lower peninsula. Um, a black ash stand can be totally decimated by the emerald ash borer in three to five years. So once it hits a stand, um, it's going to be on a steady decline until it's gone. So I like to look at it glass half full. You know, there's 99% of our ash trees dying, 1% are living, 1% are living. So I like everybody to hear that. They're not all dead, and um, hopefully our trees will gain resistance to the emerald ash borer. She's a, a perfect example of what she's been doing in, in her uh, native community in particular, uh, but for the state in general. Uh, and it's not just the incredible art that she makes because Kelly saw that that was happening and, and was concerned and actually started collecting seeds and information uh, on those trees because she didn't want to lose uh, that tradition that they have in, in the native community of using that black ash for her weaving. But what that did for the state, and, and you think about the science that's involved in that. Well, I mean, my word, what a service she did just by thinking about where her art fits into her community and the state at large. 
For me, receiving the Heritage Fellowship from the National Endowment for the Arts means so much. It means I am so thankful. I am grateful to all of those that have the awards available for us to practice our traditional arts, to be recognized for our traditional arts. Um, and it's an honor to be recognized for such um, such a such an awesome award. I nominated my mother for the award, so having her receive it, uh, I don't know, it felt like a natural conclusion. I just, I felt like she was a shoe in I, I know for her, she sees herself as this one small part in a large cog of uh, all these people working together with this resource and with these traditions and passing them on. But I don't think she realizes that from the outside looking in, she's one of the centerpieces of this entire community.